Hi, my name is Caroline. I'm a jewelry designer and maker. The name of my business is Cornelia Jewelry. Welcome to my studio. This video is the third part of a series of videos about the lost wax jewelry making technique. In this video, I will explain how to use the lost wax technique to make copies of your original pieces. If you have a piece of jewelry that was really hard to make or it took you many many hours and you would like to sell it multiple times then making a rubber mold from that piece might be very interesting for you. To do so you will need to start with your original piece in metal and I will show you in this clip how the rubber mold is created. As you can see I don't make my own rubber molds. I would like to in the future, but for now I don't have the right equipment and every company that does casting also offers making rubber molds for you. So again, if you're just starting, you don't have to buy every machine out there. I had some people asking me if you could make a rubber mold from a wax model. The answer is no, because the heat and pressure that is used to create the mold will break and melt your wax model. So when you have your rubber mold, a question I got asked is if it's possible to fill that rubber mold with uh, molten metal and the answer is no, because that would destroy your mold. The mold is filled up with wax and that wax is a casted using the lost wax casting method I showed in the video earlier. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it somewhere <laughs> here. Another question I got asked was about ring sizes. What if you make a ring and you would like to make a mold from that ring? but you would also like to offer your customers different ring sizes. Should you make a different mold for every ring size or not? Well, the answer is no, or at least I don't. I usually make quite a large size of ring because for most designs it is easier to take a piece out to make it smaller than making it bigger. That's something I really like about working like this you can easily take out a piece when the ring is still in wax, so not yet casted. And that is way faster than making the ring smaller in metal, because then you would have to saw and solder and clean it up again. So yeah, easy. Ring sizes are not the only adjustments I make. When I have a rubber mold, I fill it with wax and then I start playing with the wax again to create pieces that match the original jewelry I created the mold from. This is a method I use to create some kind of mini collections. So that was it for this video. If you have learned something please give it a thumbs up. In the next videos I will talk more about the
in the next videos I will talk more about the different types of wax you could use, about tools for wax carving and I also plan some tutorials about some beginner techniques to work with the lost wax method. If you're interested in all of that, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. And yeah, that was it. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Bye.